guys, happy Sunday and welcome to the start of another weekly vlog. We are on our way into Boston. My friend Bonnie is staying at an extended stay hotel after her surgery, so we are going to be visiting her and her mom. And my mom and I are actually going to be staying the night because tomorrow I have a doctor's appointment right down the street. And it also happens to be one of the biggest holidays in Boston. That is right, Boston Marathon Day. Also known as Patriots Day. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's going to be crazy. You do not want to try to drive into Boston on Boston Marathon Day. But I've been waiting quite a while for this doctor's appointment. It is with my mast cell specialist and it's kind of important because we think that we want to restart my solar injections. So we definitely didn't want to lose this appointment. Now we know why she had an opening. It's literally impossible to get into Boston during the marathon. So it was so gracious of Bonnie and her mom to invite us to stay with them for a little slumber party. We are taking a bit of a scenic route to get there so that my mom can explore the area a little bit so that if we have to drive tomorrow, she is a little bit more familiar with the area depending on which roads are closed and stuff like that. I wish I could capture on camera just how beautiful Boston is. If you've never been to Boston, guys, it is really worth it. It is a really, really nice city. I think there's a little bit here for everybody. And I just love seeing the old and the new and, and all the different little areas and all the different histories. I quite like it. As a kid, I honestly hated Boston because I really didn't like the city. It was too overwhelming and we always come here for field trips and I just felt like, ah, I wanna move to the country where there's nobody. But now I really, really appreciate how much is going on. Ooh, I wanna go to that store. <laughs> I don't know, they have like a really, really cute blouse in the window. Anyway. Boston's great. And we had a lot of great hospitals. Unfortunately, none of them. <laughs> Unfortunately, <laughs> I haven't benefited too much by that. Oh, look, they're setting up tents here yeah, that's exactly for the marathon. So this is the line. finish line as of tomorrow. Gosh darn it, I think that was really out of focus. The finish line is right there. <laughs> because someone is sitting next to the front entrance of where you're trying to go and smoking. Why do they always put the smoking areas next to the entrance? This is kind of pathetic. This is literally the cutest thing I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> Bonnie labeled all of our cups with speech bubbles from the duck. <laughs> If you're gonna put a duck on my cup, I'm gonna make it talk. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Good morning, you guys. It's Monday morning. I'm just getting up and getting ready for my appointment. We pretty much talked until we literally fell asleep. It was like a little slumber party. It was so nice, but now it is the morning and it is time to go to my allergist appointment. They actually have a shuttle service from this hotel to the hospital that I'm going to. And I guess it comes every half hour. So before I even came here, like Bonnie signed me up to take the shuttle. That way we don't have to drive in the crazy Boston Marathon traffic. So that'll be cool. Everybody else went down to breakfast. Oh, EDS shoulder. <laughs> Oops, my shoulder is not fully in the socket. Everybody went down to breakfast. Got a little bit of alone time, which I need in the morning. Introverts, you know the struggle. I'm getting more used to doing things in my chair, which is nice. And this hotel room is super like roomy, so both of us can get around in our chairs and it's no problem. I wish my house was like this. 
But anyway, I have to keep getting ready. I think I'm gonna try to fit in like a little meditation session because I feel like that really helps me to go into a doctor's appointment with like a calm mind and a settled heart. So I think I'm going to go do that while there's still some quiet. Ideal weather to be running a marathon, but at least it's not super, super hot. The brigade. Look at this girl after two weeks after a, quite a surgery. Actually, actually, let me just say, both of you after two weeks of surgery. Oh, that's adorable. Guys, we just left the hotel and it is pouring down. If anyone is still running in this marathon, I feel horrible for them because just getting from the hotel into this car was miserable. My poor mom had to like get the uh, wheelchair into the car, so she was out a lot longer than I was, but just in one second, I am soaked through like the doors of the car are like wet. Oh, it was such a nightmare trying to get from the wheelchair into the car from the curb, like on one foot. And like, I was like, I grabbed the handbar, which I'm not supposed to even do. Um, my foot was sliding trying to get into the car. Oh my goodness. <laughs> that could have been really bad. I knocked my head on like, the door frame coming in, but luckily I think it only just hit the titanium plate. That keeps beeping, I don't know why. Whew. It's a crazy day in Boston today. I'm really sad to be saying goodbye to Bonnie. I don't think I'm gonna be seeing her before she leaves, but the great thing about having chronically ill friends is that they'll always come back for follow-ups. And hopefully she's going to the conference and I'll see her there. All right, let's see if this thing is gonna run. Nope. Alright, I gotta fix this feeding pump. I'll talk to you guys later. Oh, you can barely see in front of you. I really I hope no hope one's still running. People are still running. Once I get the chair out, it's gonna get wet. Okay, well, time to try to get inside. Guys, look what just came in the mail. This is so gorgeous. First of all, I love little business cards. But look at this lovely piece of art. I bet you will not guess what it's made out of. Or maybe if you're watching these videos, you will. <laughs> these are the caps to the saline and heparin flushes that we use to flush through an IV line, like a port or a pick or just a plain IV. And she made it into this beautiful little shadow box. Oh, here, there's a little letter on the back of the card here. Thank you so much, Brie. This is wonderful. You guys, go follow her on her Instagram. Her personal Instagram is no fear, just faith. And then her Instagram for her art is windows of hope. Definitely check that out. So cute. You guys know how I feel about medical waste, so this makes me feel a lot better. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I have assumed the position back in my bed at home or should i say my parents bed that i have taken over and i am tired and i'm just waiting for a facetime chat with a friend of mine and doing a little bit of crocheting which is kind of funny because my new fitbit seems to be counting crocheting as steps so I've crocheted like four miles today because there's no way that I'm taking thousands of steps. I have taken zero steps today. But anyway, I'm gonna update you guys on my allergy immunology appointment before I forget. So first of all, Joe, who drove us in the shuttle, was so nice. It is so amazing that they have a shuttle service. It was the perfect day for it. Just worked out great. Anyway, my apartment went really great. My new pain specialist that I saw a couple weeks ago had indicated that he thought it was time for me to go back on those Zoller injections, even though I did have a pretty severe reaction to them a year ago. They think that the reaction was due to an accidental 
overdose, which was not like I took an overdose, but they just gave me too much. So we talked a lot about that and she strongly felt that my body just wasn't ready for it. I'm going through a lot right now and it was a pretty severe reaction and it took three months to go away. I explained that the next three months I kind of have a lot going on. She felt my body needed to continue to rest and she was very encouraged by my positive reaction to the catodafin. And I asked if the catodafin was something that you know you feel it right away and that's how you're going to feel on it or if it's something that has to build up in your system and will continue to work better the longer you take it and she said it was the latter and that usually around three months is when it really really starts to work and i don't even think i've hit that mark yet i definitely haven't hit that mark with the full dose this is only my first week taking it twice a day up till now, I've only been taking it once a day, which is technically half of the prescribed dose. So the fact that I was responding so well, so quickly to only half of the dose was a really great indicator that this could be a much better medication for me than the Zolaire injections were. I still say that the Zolaire injections were wonderful. They did an amazing job for what they did for however long they did it. And unfortunately, it just kind of built up in me and my body stopped tolerating it, which is something that can happen with medications, especially with mast cell. So I think we just all felt more comfortable with me to continue on with the catodafin. And she said we even have a lot of wiggle room with dosage on that. Like I could be basically taking like four times what I'm taking now, eventually in the future, because right now this is enough. It's making me pretty tired. Our goal is to get food in my mouth in the next six months. Whether or not I will be able to swallow it, we do not know, but just getting food in your mouth apparently is quite important to the recovery process. I guess that your mouth and your taste buds actually need stimulation, which is something that they haven't been getting and so far hasn't gone over super well, but the hope is obviously that the catodafin will continue to help me to get more stable to the point where I can actually give it a good try. And let me say, I am not objecting to that. It would be so nice to taste food again. Although I feel like it would be really unsatisfying to chew something up and then have to spit it out and not swallow. We'll see. We had to start small, right? But anyway, I'm going to sign off for now. Check in with my friend. And then I have my nurse Kayla coming to access my port and do some blood work. This is the longest day I've had in quite a while and it feels really good. Okay, talk to you guys later. Future art piece? I don't know. Hi guys, happy Tuesday. I don't even have to say where I'm going today. <laughs> it's a church Tuesday. You guys know that already. But okay, I'm constantly telling people that I'm really, really, really bad at technology. And everyone's like, no, you're not. That's impossible. You make YouTube videos. How could you possibly be bad with technology? I'm so bad with technology. And I have been trying to figure out how to properly focus and white balance this camera ever since I got it, like five months ago or something like that. And today I finally found the little dial that changes the white balance. Look at that. You know how much time that could have saved me? Yeah. I've been like editing the white balance on all of my video clips once they're already on my computer and it takes forever. There's just a dial, I don't know why. <laughs> I didn't see that before. Yeah, so I'm very technologically illiterate. If my laptop had not come with video making software already on it, then these videos would never have been born. I wonder what other features this camera has that I have literally no idea how to use because this camera is like 10 times more fancy than any need that I will ever have. <laughs> but it's super cool. So yes, welcome to the new age of my vlogs where things are properly white balanced and focused. Is that better or is that too bright? You guys will have to give me feedback on my camera skills. All right, there we go. Um, I did just want to update you guys on the catodafin. It's probably about a week that I've been taking the dose twice a day instead of once a day. 
And I'm feeling that same feeling that I felt when I went on it the first time. Like I cannot wake up in the morning and I have no desire to and I'm sleeping through alarms. I'm pressing snooze. Totally not me. But maybe that's a good thing. Getting some sleep. But that went away last time. So I'm assuming it's going to go away this time. I don't know how quickly. But I'm just toughing it out. I have survived another PT day, barely. Between kind of having exciting days the last couple days and then having that higher dose of the catodafin, my body is so tired. Like my eyelids, I can't keep them open. But I had a pretty productive ride home, which is kind of awesome because I've noticed since my last couple neck surgeries, I get way less car sick. I used to get car sick just like looking at anything in the car. It still affects me, but now I can text a little bit and like watch a little videos here and there. Mostly if I just like listen to them, like a vlog. It just really helps that long car ride just seem a little bit less long. But today I was able to FaceTime with my friend Laura who is having surgery tomorrow in the UK and it was just so nice to talk to her before she goes under. She's being really brave and she is taking on some pretty gigantic surgeries in this next year that are fairly new, both to our community and to the doctors performing it. Obviously, it's not my story to tell, but I just want you guys to know this girl is pretty great. Then after I hung up with her, my other amazing friend, Bonnie, helped walk me through ordering some new rims for my wheelchair. They're the part of the wheelchair wheel that you grab onto to push. I should probably look up the real name. Hold on. They're called hand rims. Now you know. I knew that the ones on my wheelchair now were kind of terrible, but I didn't really know how terrible until Bonnie let me try her chair. And she tried mine. And she was like, girl, I don't even know how you can possibly be pushing this thing. It's so bad. So what I currently have now on the wheelchair is just like a metal rim that you grab onto to push yourself. And there's a couple problems with that. The most annoying one actually being that like my rings clank and scrape against it. Also, it's incredibly hard to grip. It's quite thin, which isn't great for EDS hands. And it's very close to the wheel, so you almost can't get your thumb in there. And it's very, very, very slippery, especially when it gets wet. Like, every single time I've had to use it in this last week, it's been pouring rain. And it's frustrating because as I'm starting to feel better and better, especially upper body-wise, I'm able to do more self-propulsion and I don't have to be pushed as much and that feels really really freeing to me it's a bit vulnerable feeling like you're stuck and you have to ask to be pushed everywhere and we're just working to give me just as much independence and dignity as possible in my life I'm 22 and I'm still very 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 dependent on my parents for pretty much everything and it's difficult and I want to have as much autonomy as I can so after trying out those hand rims I was pretty much sold and decided to go after them so you guys are going to ask if the insurance covers it and my answer is going to be I don't know because I have not submitted it to insurance I ordered them directly off of the internet. Why did I do that? Well, I want them now. I am very impatient and I decided that right now is when I really need them and I don't really want to wait very long. And unfortunately, going through insurance for wheelchair stuff is a long process. When I first got my chair, I believe it was between six months to a year after I was measured that the insurance had finally cleared it and we actually got the chair. I'm waiting six months to a year for this is kind of silly because I'll probably be walking by then and right now is when I need it. I know that as the EDS my relationship with the wheelchair is going to be a lifelong love-hate relationship 
because this likely will not be my last surgery and certainly won't be my last joint injury and a wheelchair is something that I do use on a regular basis when going out to a place where there is a lot of walking involved. A lot of times I just can't keep up and saving energy becomes a priority. Like for instance if I went to like Disney which by the way, I have never been and I really want to. There is no way I could walk around the entire park in the heat and still enjoy myself. Yeah, maybe I'll get some stairs here and there, but I'm going to enjoy myself significantly more if I'm not worried about pain and my health and my stamina the entire time. And it would just be so great to be able to push myself where I want to go. Bonnie and I talked a lot about it. She has an incredible knowledge on wheelchairs and it was so so helpful. I can't even tell you I never would have been able to do it myself. But I didn't really realize all the different options there were out there for me. Like switching out the tires for something that was more shock absorbing. Or thinking about a rigid chair that would provide more support and also be a bit more portable. These are options I didn't know I had and it's unfortunate that our doctors aren't the ones telling us about these options. It's always other patients. Like when I got my port and you guys suggested that I ask for samples of different needles or when I switched out my feeding pump for a different model because one of you guys told me that it was a lot better. I mean, why don't these people tell us? They just give you like the cheapest model that they can and they don't tell you that you have a choice in the matter. So I'm starting with the hand rims. I'm ordering those by myself. And then when it comes to the other things that I talked to Bonnie about, I think that I'm going to try to go through the guy who originally measured my chair and stuff and have that submitted through insurance. That way I can get those taken care of when I don't immediately need them now. And maybe even think of something like Smart Drive, Smart Assist, which is kind of like cruise control for a wheelchair. You charge it and then it clips onto the back and you turn it on it's a little motor and that way you don't have to push yourself the entire time the chair can kind of take over which is cool but it's not necessarily a huge need of mine right now as I'm not very active right now but in the future as I become more independent I don't know if I will be a part-time chair user. I don't know if I will be a full-time chair user. It's obviously my goal to use it as little as possible. Not because of the stigma or really even the inconvenience, but mostly just to keep my muscles moving and keep my muscles strong so that they can continue to support my joints. And walking is also great for your cardiovascular system. It's not ideal to spend all of your time sitting, but spending your time sitting in a wheelchair is significantly better than spending your time sitting in bed. So if a wheelchair can get you out of bed, then it's worth it. Hello there, internet family. It is Thursday. Nope, it's Wednesday. <laughs> it is Wednesday evening. I am picking up the camera for the first time today because I have done a whole lot of nothing today. Okay, that's sort of not true. I've done a lot of work on some projects that I can't quite tell you guys about yet. They're sort of a secret, but I will hopefully be able to tell you guys about some of them soon. I want you guys to be surprised, and a lot of times I have no idea if any of my ideas or projects are actually going to go through. So. Don't want to raise anybody's hopes. Hold on, my arm is already tired. Let me get a tripod. Okay, that's better. Sorry. Oh, these last few days have just been really physically taxing for me with going into the city and spending time with Bonnie and then having my physical therapy appointment yesterday, just the whole ordeal. I am so physically tired today. Every movement is like, I don't know if you guys have these days where you just physically cannot move. I don't know. I can't explain it. Um, we don't know if I have mitochondrial involvement in my condition. That is something that a lot of doctors have brought up, especially since 
my family has history of possible mitochondrial disease I'm currently being tested I've been tested for some things in the past which came back normal but if I did have mitochondrial involvement in my illness it would explain why every time I overexert myself or have a long day my body just kind of totally gives out on me for a couple days and I know that's something that just happens with EDS as well so it could just be EDS but it might be something more so the pain specialist that I just went to see is doing that testing. I don't know how long it'll be until we hear back. You never know with that kind of thing. It's usually forever, but this is how I've been ever since I got sick around age 10, 12. Um, just every few days, I would just kind of hit a wall of fatigue and like not even be able to move or roll over in bed for a long time actually even when i was in gymnastics i thought i was just really out of shape <laughs> which to be fair right now i am very out of shape but not this out of shape so that's what leads them to think that i might have some mitochondria involvement because what is the one thing that you recall from high school science that is right, the mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. So, I'm gonna lay back down so I can breathe. But, it was good to check in with you guys. Hopefully tomorrow, I'm back to myself. This is what I don't always show you. But, I try to show you guys as much as I can. In some days, there's not much to show. At least my Fitbit is super proud of me. Apparently, I've been working out all day long. Good morning, you guys. Happy Thursday. Yes, it is actually Thursday at this time. I have some friends who are about to come over, so I have to talk fast. But I wanted to show you guys I'm so excited. I am a total medical supplies nerd, and anything that makes my life easier, very exciting. My supply company finally sent me some samples of feeding tube extensions that do not have a medi port because the medi port has become my absolute enemy. After the two instances last week, it actually opened up again on me a couple days ago. Luckily, it just ruined my outfit this time and not the whole bed, but I was done. So we contacted my supply company again asking, is there absolutely any way that you guys could find me a tube extension that does not have two ports? I've showed you guys this before, but my feeding tube extension has the port that I use here to plug into the feeding pump itself like this. And then it also has a side port here, which you can see I have taped up, but it still leaks. And this is made for like a smaller syringe for putting like liquid meds in and stuff, but I have never used it ever. <laughs> and I don't need it there and it's causing me grief. So they sent me two different extensions to try. This one, I don't think is gonna be the answer. I've had this one before. This is just a straight extension. So basically, let me show you what I mean. Basically, you can see that the extension that I have right now, it goes in at an angle. This is my Mickey button and this is the extension. And so it doesn't stick straight out, which is nice. It hides better under clothes this way and it's not painful. This one that they sent me goes straight in and it would stick out this way. I've used these before when I was doing bolus beads. So see, that's the end of the extension. No bend. So I am hoping that this one works because this one does have the bend like this, but I'm not sure if it's gonna fit because it's made for a slightly different model. So fingers crossed. This is actually pretty cool because it's glows in the dark, which I'm like five years old and I love that. 
Okay. Let's see if this works. My site is a little bit red and irritated right now, as you can tell from the gate belt that I've been wearing. Um, it just really kind of bothers it. So I'm going to detach my feet. I'm going to detach this extension. I didn't prime this extension or anything. I'm not going to put anything through it. Don't worry. I'm not going to get a belly full of air. <sighs> Let's see if it fits. Oh my gosh. Yes, this is going to make my life so much better. <laughs> it's the little things, guys. The little things. I'm going to go prime this extension and start my feeds. I think the only part that's going to take some getting used to is the fact that this doesn't have like a cap on it like my old extension did. See? So I used to be able to like unclamp it and then it still wouldn't come out. This one, if I unclamp it, everything's going to come out. And I got to remember that. That might be an issue, but this seems so much better. Okay guys, so this is so cool. My parents put a kitchen in our basement so that I wouldn't be triggered by the food smells. And so my friends are downstairs and they're cooking. And I haven't actually, this is my first time seeing the kitchen. I don't know if you guys knew that, but I haven't really seen it. <laughs> I haven't been down there. So, okay. No, so look at how cool this is. So they are like snap, like live, what would you call this? Like live Snapchatting? I guess it's like a new feature on Snapchat. I just got a Snapchat and I'm learning how to use it. But now I get to see everything that's going on downstairs and I'm not missing out on anything. And I'm getting a little cooking show. <laughs> You guys are so cute. <laughs> okay, Snapchat's kind of fun. Also, you are looking mighty beautiful in that sweater. <laughs> Well, I will talk to you guys later. I'm gonna go hang out with my friends virtually. <laughs> I thought it was flattering. Hi guys, so I just got back from physical therapy. So that should tell you that it's Friday. I have just had it today. I had some friends over last night and I don't think they left it until like 5.30 this morning. I went to bed at like 2.30 because I am a responsible adult who knew I had PT today. But I am still pretty tired. Yeah. Trish did a lot of work on my head today. Just making sure that the flow is working, which it wasn't. So now things are flowing, but the adjustment really takes a lot out of you. I don't really know how to explain it. It's kind of like your brain just ran a marathon. It's quite strange. I have very poor proprioception, meaning I, at any given time, don't really have a very good idea of where my body is in space. So when she does work on my head, it helps to realign my proprioception and my midline. So it helps, theoretically, with balance but when you are very used to everything being crooked straight doesn't exactly feel straight so everything just looks a little bit slightly tilted and it's making me feel a bit motion sick i have a tired body a tired brain feeling motion sick my nerves are finally waking up from surgery, which is good news. It means that the nerves are working and they weren't permanently shut down, but ow, they are not happy. I am just like slathering myself in the CV theremu stuff. I talk about it all the time, literally saving my life. This is their Relieve Pro Balm and 
I don't know what I would do without it. <laughs> oh, and look at this cool new hot water bottle that I got. It's like translucent purple. It looks like an amethyst to me, and it's really awesome. It came in this really soft little bag that I think you're supposed to keep it in, but I misplaced that already. And I really miss like that UU bottle, that like giant hot water bottle that I had that I showed you guys months ago. And like I have the bottle and I have the bag for it, but somewhere we misplaced the cap. It was packed for one of our trips and then I just haven't seen it since then. So I don't know if we left it somewhere. I hope we didn't. Hopefully it's like literally still packed in a suitcase somewhere. There's a bunch of things that I'm looking for right now. Stuff that like either got misplaced during one of our trips or like during swapping rooms. Just can't find my stuff and it's so frustrating. I always like to know where everything is and I'm just trying to get stuff done and I don't have any of the supplies I need. I want to just like get up and look for everything but I can't so instead I'm trying to walk everyone else through finding things and not going well. Especially I really need like my CMC braces for my hands and I know that I packed them during our last trip and I know I put them in one of my bags but I just don't know which one and my hands are killing me. Whatever. You guys probably don't care quite as much as I do about all my lost belongings. <gasps> I think I need to take a nap. Okay so the whole nap thing didn't happen. It seems like I can only take a nap when I really don't want to, but whenever I'm exhausted and I try, I just cannot fall asleep. But now it's like 1.30 in the morning. That's why I'm whispering because everyone's asleep. And I'm crashing hard. I'm like delirious with exhaustion. So, I'm off to bed. Wish me luck in the sleep department. It has not been easy. I don't know why. I just feel like uh, I'm gonna like get ready for bed as I'm talking to you. I don't know why. I feel like naps are like more work. Like sleeping is more work. Like I'm like too exhausted to sleep and I don't know if that makes sense to anybody besides me. But with EDS, it's like you go to sleep and you just never know what you've dislocated when you're sleeping. A fun surprise every single morning. Mostly I've just been resting and trying to get energy like that. I find like actually sleeping isn't really very restorative. Like I don't wake up feeling really refreshed. I wake up feeling just so much worse. <laughs> you guys will probably understand. Shoot, if I had to take off my mascara before I did that. Oh well, I'll have mascara tomorrow. <laughs> I'm just so done with today. Tomorrow is going to be a better day, and I have a lot to get done, so I better get to sleep. I'm going to use you guys for a mirror for a second. This stuff, it's called Mario Badescu Drying Lotion. This is like my holy grail beauty product, and literally everybody in my family uses it now. If you have like spots and pimples and stuff like that, then this is the best stuff Ever. I tend to break out a lot on my chin because I have to wear the neck brace. As long as I put that on every single night, I do not break out. If I miss a night, I instantly get like spots all over my chin. Love this stuff. Not sponsored. Please sponsor me. I'm just going to do a little Lovenox injection and then I'm heading to bed. I would film that, but I feel like people get like freaked out by seeing needles going into skin, so you're welcome. Good morning, you guys, and happy Sunday. I'm feeling a whole lot better today. I just kind of needed to take a day off yesterday. And look, my dad found my CMC splints, so that has been a major help. Basically, I've just been working on a few secret little projects that I can't really tell you guys about. I've actually got like four or five different projects in the works right now and so I'm just kind of trying to juggle all of them. I've got like different journals to try to keep track of each separate one and then of course I'm still trying to get my Etsy shop reopened and 
functioning. Just got this video that you're watching right now pretty much fully edited. I'm working on kind of draping this new little crochet sweater that I've been playing with the last few days. I'm also still working on that giveaway I've been promising you guys for months. Today we finally went through a bunch of my stuff and I was able to get all the pieces for the giveaway at least located. It kind of all just had to get put on hold when we ended up having to go to Maryland and I had this surgery on my neck so just got a lot going on but all good things. Plus, I was finally allowed to take the compression stocking out from under my brace. So it feels amazing to have my leg open to the air once again. Anyway, I am here to close out the vlog for the week so I can hurry up and get this outro onto the video and get the video uploading for you guys. I always feel really stupid saying this, but if you like this video, it really does make a difference if you give it a thumbs up. I think it really just helps my videos to be recommended more often, which kind of helps us as a community to raise awareness. And if you're new around here and you're not subscribed yet, you have the chance to do that now. And I will see you guys next week. Bye!